tell you a really crazy story that happened to me yesterday. I was really craving sushi, but my normal place wasn't open. So I was like, okay, no problem. I'll go to DoorDash. So one of the first places listed is this new sushi place I've never seen in the next town over, but I'm like, okay, cool. Let me try somewhere new. So I order it 30 minutes later, it arrives at my house. I'm like, yes, so excited to eat or so I thought. I open up the bag to see a handwritten note. I'm like, what is this? You can pause to read, but here's the note. Basically the note says, I am so sorry. This was made with absolutely no training and to please feel free to call DoorDash for a refund. So I'm like, wait, what? I'm really not a picky person. So I open up the sushi and it literally looks like a truck like ran it over. I'm like, okay, this is probably not safe to eat. I don't know what happened here. Anyways, I Google the name of this place and absolutely nothing comes up. Like no trace of this place. It is not a real restaurant. I go back to the DoorDash app to find what address they have listed on DoorDash. I get the address and I Google it and it comes up as my local TGI Fridays. Basically after a little bit of research, come to find out TGI Fridays is opening what they're calling ghost kitchens. Basically they market themselves not as TGI Fridays, but as like a sushi restaurant or whatever type of restaurant on these delivery apps. And then you order from them thinking you're getting it from like a real sushi place, but it's actually coming from a TGI Fridays. Apparently a ton of other restaurants do this too as well. So it's a little weird that you don't really know where you're ordering from. Let me know what you guys think about this. And if you've ever ordered from a ghost kitchen, have you ever even heard of this before? Double check where you're actually ordering from next time you order from a delivery service. Get ready with me while I tell you guys about how I accidentally snitched on my sister in high school for sneaking out. So she was in 12th grade and I was in 9th grade, but I probably had the maturity level of like a 5th grader and the knowledge of a 5th grader. To put things in perspective, at this time I was sleeping with my little brother because we would stay up all night and play Minecraft. Very like well under what I should have been at my age. So one night, me and my little brother finished our Minecraft Chronicles. And I believe I fell asleep for a little bit, but then I noticed my sister's light was on. So I was like, I'm gonna go be nice and turn that off for her. Also, if you can hear like some weird sounds, the people above us, I believe are doing their laundry and it is so loud. And it's been doing this for like an hour. So I was like, I'm filming, like get ready with me. So I went to turn her TV off and I noticed there was like blankets covering her like on her bed. And I was like, oh my gosh, like she's not gonna be able to breathe. And when I tell you, this is literally my ninth grade thoughts. So when I pulled the blanket back to help her breathe better, I saw these pillows like in position that looked like a human. And this is going to sound so dramatic. After I did that, I noticed her curtain was like blowing and it's nighttime. So everything was like more dramatic to me. So in my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, somebody like kidnapped my sister, left her TV, her light on, made it look like there was somebody still sleeping in her bed so that they could get away with this. So I'm already freaking out, like already on the verge of tears. And I'm like, I have to go like run to my parents' room and tell them that Sarah is kidnapped. And how naive I was at the time definitely kept me from understanding the situation, obviously. So I go into my parents' room and I'm like, guys, Sarah's kidnapped. And I'm like crying already. And the first thing my mom does is hop out of bed and goes, Sarah snuck out. And I was like, uh, like no part of me thought that. I was like, no mom, like she's kidnapped. You don't understand. The curtain was like swinging in the dark. So I start sitting on the couch while my parents are like calling her and going outside to see where she's at. And I'm like crying, but at this point I'm like, maybe I did accidentally snitch. So my sister gets home and she's like explaining her side of the story to my parents and why she had to do what she did. And I'm just sitting there like, um. So at this point, she's obviously a little sad cause she got in trouble. I would have gotten in trouble too. And I'm just like, I'm gonna go in her room and comfort her and don't think I'm a snake cause I didn't know. Not my stupid self saying to her, I wouldn't have told on you, I just thought you got kidnapped. She goes, you told? Yeah, that was me. Moral of the story, if you ever think you're not a cool person, at least you're not me. Story time on how I got stuck on the water slide on the cruise. Go on this water slide, you have to weigh a bare minimum of 120 pounds. First day that I tried to go on the water slide, he weighed me and I only weighed 119.6 pounds. And he told me to go eat a sandwich and come back and I could try again. And I literally went and ate a sandwich and tried again, except for I still did not make the requirement. Next day, as I was walking past the water slide, I asked if I could try again. And for some reason, I magically hit 120 pounds. It was one of those water slides where the floor drops out from underneath you and you just free frawl. I go on the slide and I have just enough weight to make it to the top ridge of the first loop but i have to scoot my butt over it to make it down on the second loop i did not make it i didn't have enough weight so i went up and then i went down backwards but when i went backwards i went right past the door so i was under the assumption that i got stuck in the only part of the water slide where there was no escape i start panicking i sit up in the tube it's humid it's hard to breathe in there water's rushing water's in my contacts i'm trying to see i realize that i'm in the clear part of the tube so i look down i'm on the part of the tube that hangs off the ship hundreds of feet down below is the ocean and i'm like mm, 
don't look that way. So I look up at the guy who sent me down and I'm like, hey, I like clear the fog off the, the tube and I'm like bang and I'm like, how do I get out of here? I'm freaking out. Cause in front of me is an upward hike on the water slide. I'm in a loop, okay? And I'm at the bottom of the loop. In my mind, it's up and up. I don't know how I'm supposed to get out. Well, he's pointing this way. He's like, go that way. So I move this way into the water slide, which is like pitch black because it was dark and covered. And that is when I found the escape door and the guy opened it up and he let me out. He gets me out and he's like, are you okay? And I literally look at him and I was like, that was not fun. And then I just left and uh, I'm a little bit of an adrenaline junkie, but that was horrifying. Story time about how me and my ex-best friend used to be the most devious little children you probably would have ever met. Real quick, let me know in the comments if you prefer the headband or hair clips. So, me and this girl had met in kindergarten, and this story takes place in, like, first grade. And my grandparents were watching me this day. And my mom gave my grandparents very strict instructions not to let this girl at my house. Not for any reason, but, like, she didn't want me hanging out with her that day. But me and this girl, we'll call her peanut butter because she was a peanut butter to my jelly because we were just always on the same page, decided that we should hang out. That day in first grade, we planned all day to figure out how we were going to get this girl into my house. Luckily, we lived in the same neighborhood, so we rode the same bus home. But the bus driver was very strict about getting off on your stop. So we had her put her sweatshirt on, throw her hood over top, and then and we found these little glasses, and we dressed her up so nobody could tell who it is and got her off the bus. But now we had to do the hard part and get her out into the house. So I told my grandparents I need help with them outside on my back porch because she's out front. And I tell them, oh, I'm just going in to grab something. I'll be a minute. And I lock them outside of my house, lock all the doors in my house, get my best friend into my room. Then I go back downstairs to let them in and tell them I don't need help with what I asked them to help with. God knows what that was. I, I have no clue. My mom comes home 30 minutes early and peanut butter is still at my house because peanut butter wasn't going to leave for another 15 minutes because she literally lived in my neighborhood. So... My mom walks in the house and is like, hey, I'm home. And she asked, to, asked for me to come down. So I come downstairs and act like nobody's in our house because at this point, my grandparents still have no clue this girl is in my house. So, so then I go down and talk to my mom like nobody is in our house. And she's like, who's up there making noise? Because my friend could just not shut her mouth. I'm like, oh, it's no one, the TV. My friend runs down the stairs and goes, hey. And my mom looks at her and goes, I think it's time for you to go home, peanut butter. And she goes, can I ride the Vespa before I leave? Which was my little motorized scooter. And my mom is like, no, absolutely not. So peanut butter gets on the bike, rides down the road. And my mom's like yelling at her the whole time, like, get off, get off, get off. And she's watching my mom instead of the road and runs into the neighbor's house. Peanut butter ended up getting a little hurt, not bad, so my mom helped her, and then she went home. But when I tell you we got in a lot of trouble that day, yeah. But that's all, bye. I saw a video of a girl asking if you have ever had a friend that just hated you, and I thought this was my time to shine. So I went through a lot of different like friend groups and best friends and stuff throughout my whole life but I had one friend that I had for seven years and one friend that I had for four and the friend I had for seven years met um, I started becoming friends with this other girl in high school and I just introduced the two of them together so then all three of us became a trio and one weird thing about my school was that we didn't have like people weren't just like friends with just one other person like there weren't a whole lot of that it was a lot of big groups so even though we weren't popular, everybody like knew of us because we were that weird group that like the weird trio. Like I'm telling you, even teachers knew not to separate us because we were going to like back together. So fast forward to senior prom, we're going to call them Rachel and Ashley. Rachel and Ashley went to Ashley's house and decided that they were going to get ready together and I got ready at my house. Now, this made sense because Rachel lived, no, I'm sorry, Ashley lived pretty far out um, and I had a hair appointment in the middle of the day, so it didn't really make sense to drive all the way out there, drive back into town, drive back out there. I just got ready at my home. 
And if you've seen my prom pictures, you know I did Lady Gaga's Met Gala look for prom. Skipping blush and highlight because I'm doing that in a different video. So I finished my picture, uh, my makeup and I text a picture of it to Rachel. And she's like, oh, you need to take that off. You cannot wear that. That is embarrassing. Like, we do not want to be seen with that. And I'm just like, no, like I spent two hours on it. I did not have time to take it off. I was like, no. And she was like, okay, well then we're not gonna come get you. Now my parents had my car because one of their cars was in the shop. And I was like, you have to come get me or I can't get there. So begrudgingly, they come to my house and they pick me up and then we meet all of our parents to go do pictures. Now, when we get there, they take one picture with me. Also, no, the whole drive over, they did not talk to me or acknowledge me. So they take one picture with me, then I get sprayed by a sprinkler and I get soaked. So now I'm crying. They do not care, they have better things to do. And then at this point, the parents are finding this weird because I'm being like completely overlooked and that's never happened before, at least that they've seen. So all the parents are like, are you okay? What's going on? I'm like, I'm fine, don't worry about it. Everything's fine. So we finish pictures and say farewell to our parents. So then we go to dinner, it's the most awkward thing ever, no one talks to me, so I'm just like, okay, when I get to prom, I'll find other people. At prom, some other girls hang out with us, so it's fine, it doesn't feel too awkward. Then when we get in the car to leave, Ashley looks at Rachel and is like, hey, do you want to spend the night at my house? And Rachel's like, yeah, I'd love to. So Ashley goes, great, we'll drop Allie off and then we will go to my house, and that's exactly what happened. <laughs> Get ready with me to tell you about how I got in trouble at school for literally just being an influencer. Back in the day, when I used to go to school and make a presence there every day, I was in a fight with these girls, and they just, like, were mad at me for some reason. So, I guess they told the teacher I went on live or something, and I was on live talking about them, I guess, but I hadn't been live in, like, two months when they said that happened so when the teacher pulled me aside to tell me about the situation which first of all he did it in the most unprofessional manner in the entire world i don't know maybe as a teacher you should be teaching us how to like deal with things in an appropriate manner maybe not pull a child aside while they're switching classes in front of many kids to talk about a situation that is a private conversation then this man has the audacity to tell me he saw the live and he was on it. A grown man. A, a grown man. And so after he told me, like, he was on the live watching and, like, he saw it, that's when I got really annoyed because it's like, you're a grown adult. Not even a grown adult. You're a grown man. Why do you have interest in watching a 14-year-old girl at the time? on live like that's so strange to me and that and so i looked at him when he told me wh why i was in trouble and i said i don't mess with your job i could make a bunch of excuses about you and say that you're an awful teacher but i don't i don't mess with your job so do not mess with mine i haven't been on live in two months so if you have a problem you can reach out to my manager this is, like, also, like, the guy that just, like, loved getting involved with the teenage drama every time. My dude, during this conversation, we were in the middle of the hallway the entire time. So, like, anybody that wanted to hear could have heard. So, because this guy just wasn't done talking to me then and didn't get that I didn't care because I wasn't on live and I wasn't guilty, he then makes a scene in front of the whole class that I'm in and says we need to talk about what happened yesterday because it was unacceptable no sweetie you want to know what's unacceptable watching teenage girls lives when you're a grown man mm -hmm. that's unacceptable so my response when he said that was you're not going to be taking my only free time away i have in the day which is lunch to talk about the stupidest conversation because i did not do it there's literally analytical proof that i have not been live in two months so you can go speak to my manager and then gave him my manager's email let's just say he had some choice words to say about me and the parent teacher meeting but bye